There's a big problem here, guys, in Australia. And I know you guys have this problem in America. We have this problem in Europe. This problem is in China. This problem is everywhere around the world. But mostly it's in places where there is a lot of solar power installed, particularly rooftop solar, right? Big problems with rooftop solar. Now, we can fix these issues. In fact, I'm going to make a new video on on how California has managed to solve all of its solar problems. Well, when I say solar problems, what I mean is solar is typically generated between 9 a.m. and about 4 p.m. in most places worldwide, lots of solar. So the, the probably the most solar in most places between 10, and, 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. All this extra solar, it's going into the grid. It's too much for the grid to handle, for most grids to handle, causing problems. Now, some electricity retailers are charging people to send solar into the grid, right? Rather than make, you're basically giving them energy and now they're charging you for it. That's crazy. But that can be reversed. And one of the ways you can get around paying the so-called solar tax, as it's been called here in Australia, which to be honest, it's a little bit more complicated than this, but there is, it is kind of a tax or a reduction on the tariff rate you get. One of the ways you can do that is by getting a Tesla battery. However, Tesla's California virtual power plant actually delivered 100 megawatt to help the grid in California. So in California, we basically have a pilot, kind of a pilot situation here where California is essentially showing the rest of the world how problems can be solved. Now, everything I just said about solar being an issue, right, in the middle of the day, can essentially be solved with us not even buying batteries, with us just all buying EVs. And if we charge our EVs during the middle of the day, that there's your excess capacity. It's basically gonna be sucked up by all those EVs. That is essentially a huge reason why EVs can actually solve problems in the grid. Not, not actually make them worse, it solves them. So a lot of people are curious, they think, how can an EV possibly solve problems in the grid? Well, that's how they can do it. In addition to that, you can then use your EV to basically save the grid. Now, some there was actually a big problem here in Australia recently. A coal power plant just collapsed. It had a fault and it just stopped working. So that meant an entire city basically was out of power. What happened was people used their EVs as basically like uh, virtual power plants to send power back into the grid to essentially save the grid and keep people's lights on. In California, that's happening as well, but in a much bigger way because you guys have 40 million people and we only have about 25 million here in the entire country of Australia. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Tesla's virtual power plant in California delivered 100 megawatts, which is massive of power to help the grid not use gas peaker plants. Now, what do you think happens to these gas peaker plants, right? Well, basically, if you've bought a Tesla um, battery, right, in California, you personally on an individual level are helping to bankrupt oil and gas. That's literally what you're doing. Now, gas peaker plants, they are low hanging fruit. They're very expensive. They cost a lot of money. And that's one of the reasons why electricity is expensive. It is in fact, the key reason why. Pika plants, and Elon Musk has mentioned pika plants on a number of occasions. He's like, yeah, 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 of course, we're gonna get rid of pika plants first. They're easy, they're the low hanging fruit. That's what's happening with this virtual power plant. The gas pika plant, these are the owners there would be just so sad seeing this happen because it means this is gonna continue to happen. Just because um, this happened once, that doesn't mean it's never gonna happen again. It's gonna continue happening over and over and over. And these owners of these Tesla Powerwalls are getting pretty good kickbacks and rebates because that 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. peak, right? That's when all the, everyone needs electricity or 6 p.m. to maybe even 10 p.m. That's when the electricity is needed. You send your power into the grid at that time of the evening, you can make quite a bit of money and that will help offset the cost of your power wall. It's peak of plant season in California. Heat waves are hitting the region. People are cranking up their air conditioners, especially when they get home in the evenings. That puts a lot of load on the electricity grid. Now, many of you might know this, but the key source, the number one source of electricity now in California in the peak time of day, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., 
obviously it used to be fossil fuels. It's actually now batteries that are charged during the day by solar. Now, California is really the first place in the world to really to actually have that make that happen. Tesla has been using virtual power plants to aggregate its distributed energy systems, rooftop solar and power wall to provide grid services and get more value for customers. And it's a real no brainer if you live in California, in my opinion, to be part of a virtual power plant. A lot of people think, oh, buying a battery doesn't actually make financial sense. That's because their brains aren't making financial sense. Their brains are not factoring in being part of a virtual power plant. Why would you not be? I mean, Tesla Powerwalls now use lithium ion phosphate batteries. They're going to last longer than you're going to be alive for. Uh, maybe not, but actually there's a pretty good chance they will. So you don't need to worry about excess usage. And essentially what's going to happen is that being part of that virtual power plant, well, a lot of people have paid off their power walls simply from that. And then you have a free battery system, right? You've got to get free electricity and continue to make money. It's an absolute no-brainer in California or in other places where Tesla has virtual power plants like in Adelaide. A virtual power plant consists of distributed energy storage systems. Tesla power walls, for example, can be part of it, but also Tesla mega packs in some cases as well. They are used in concert to provide grid services and avoid the use of polluting expensive Pika power plants. Pika power plants are really bad, in fact, on numerous levels. I'll make a video about that guys soon. I won't bore you with those details now. In 2021, Tesla launched a virtual power plant pilot program in California where power wall owners could join in voluntarily. This is a choice, guys. You're not being forced by Tesla. I just want to make that very clear because I know some people are saying, ah, oh, F Tesla, they're forcing us to do this. You don't have to do it. Um, yeah, Tesla initially launched it without compensation to let the virtual power plant pull power from their battery packs when the grid needed it. This helped Tesla prove the usefulness of such a system and prove that it would work. Now, following the pilot program, Tesla and PG&E the electric utility that um, is, well, the biggest utility in Northern California launched the first official power plant through the Tesla app. The new version of the Tesla virtual power plant compensates power wall owners $2 per kilowatt hour. That's actually quite a bit of money that they contribute to the grid during emergency load reduction events. Homeowners are expected to get around $10 to $60 per event. These events could be quite common. So you can pay your power wall off within a few years. Some people have. Now Tesla's virtual power plant actually covers the Southern California Edison area as well. It actually covers most of California. So before you buy it, make sure you're actually going to be covered, but it's pretty likely you will be. Virtual power plants have been growing ever since at a fast pace. And in fact, not just Tesla ones, but power plants and battery packs backing up solar farms have been the fastest growing source of anything this year. I mean, look at Tesla's growth, 9.4 gigawatt hours versus four gigawatt hours in the first quarter. But experts are saying that will increase by 600% by 2030. Now you can see why. Tesla is focusing on energy rather than EVs. <laughs> Think about it this way, guys. Tesla only has to sell one single mega pack to make as much money as it does selling 100 electric cars. That means a single relatively small mega pack factory makes as much profit as an EV factory building a million cars a year. Now, there's currently no EV factory in the world producing 1 million cars per year. Gives you some context. Virtual power plants continue to grow. Tesla announced it had one of those emergency load events yesterday. Its virtual power plants provided over 100 megawatts of capacity during that event. That's an enormous amount. The event lasted approximately one hour. That means it generated 200,000 US dollars for Tesla Powerwall owners simply by letting the other people use your battery for one hour. That's crazy. Now, Tesla will continue to launch its uh, Powerwall programs, its virtual power plant in many other countries over the coming years. They have a license, Tesla have a license to act as an energy retailer in Australia. They have one for the UK. They have energy licenses across numerous countries, and this is the reason. Tesla will become basically an electricity supplier. Tesla makes a little bit of profit, you make some profit. The grid is able to use renewable energy and no fossil fuels, and everyone benefits. Now, if you still think Tesla's a car company, um, <laughs> there is no hope for you, put it that way. 
Tesla has deployed more than 600,000 Powerwalls around the world, and its energy division is growing at an incredible pace. Many people are saying that within a few years time from now, Tesla will make more profit from selling Powerwalls and mega packs than from electric cars. And that is a good thing. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.